What's up, everybody? My name is Brad, and happy Friday. I hope everyone had a great week. Hope everyone's going to have a good weekend. I, myself, I'm excited for the weekend coming up. If you're returning to the channel, thanks for coming back and sticking around. If you happen to be new to the channel, I read a lot of Indian small press horror, a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of sci-fi. So if that sounds like anything that you're interested in, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Check out some of the other content on the channel, and maybe you'll discover a book that you enjoy. But by now, you all know the drill. We're here for a book review, and today's review is going to be on Halloween Season by Lucy A. Snyder. And this was put out by Raw Dog Screaming Press. Uh, my friend Aaron, she sent this to me, so thank you to Aaron and Raw Dog for sending this along my way for review consideration. I really do appreciate that. Uh, so right off the bat, uh, this is I gave this book two and a half stars, which will round up to three for Amazon and Goodreads, and I'll explain sort of my reasoning behind that. Uh, so first and foremost, this book it just screams Halloween, you know, from the title being Halloween season to the cover. I really love the cover art. This might be one of my favorite covers all year. You know, it just screams Halloween. It wraps around here. Um, it looks like some trick or treaters have ventured up to the wrong house or some some creepers and stuff going around here. My son really likes the cover. Uh, while I was reading it, it was sitting on my desk. He'd come in and just stare at the cover. Uh, he really likes the, the vampire guy, as he called it, on the back. Uh, but with so much, you know, sort of full frontal Halloween-ness going on in the title and the cover, uh, you would expect a lot of Halloween within these stories. Uh, but strangely enough, there isn't much Halloween going on here. Uh, the opening poem, Beggar's Night, has some really strong Halloween vibes. And the story Cosmic Cola is about some kids going to a Halloween party. Uh, but other than that, the Halloween sort of feeling and essence and vibe was sort of, at least for me, it was lacking with the rest of the stories. Uh, some of the stories, you know, they do mention, you know, pumpkins on the porch and Halloween decorations like in the doctor's office. Uh, but they were just like mentions here and there just to sort of make it feel like the story was taking place around Halloween. But they didn't just really feel like Halloween, at least to me anyway. Um, also, there's a few Christmas stories in here, which sort of caught me off guard. Uh, it does mention that if you read the synopsis, it does tell you there's going to be Christmas stories. Uh, but for it being called Halloween season, I just wasn't expecting that. Um, and I didn't really like the Christmas stories. Um, not that I don't like Christmas horror stories. Um, I just didn't like them in this collection because I was expecting it all to be Halloween. Um, you know, Christmas is already encroaching. It's already taken over Thanksgiving. It already encroaches on Halloween. You know, the jolly fat man and the, what is it? The uh, curse of consumerism. It's already taking over Thanksgiving and Halloween. So keep it to Christmas time. I don't need Christmas in my Halloween book. Um, and that's a little salty, but it just really annoys me. Like when I go to Walmart or the mall and they already have Christmas decorations up before October, before October 31st. Has even rolled around so that's a little little rant there i like i said i don't mind horror stories about christmas i just wasn't expecting them to be in here and i didn't care for them really all that much so even though all these didn't feel like halloween stories at least in my opinion um, i did really appreciate the variety and the uniqueness that was put on display here uh, the book it really showcases snyder's writing ability and her talent and the imagination and her ability to translate that to the page um, it also covers a really wide range of genres. Uh, we have like Lovecraftian and cosmic horror, bits of dark fantasy, bits of horror and voodoo and sci-fi and some dark humor. So it really does cover a wide, uh, wide range of genres. Uh, the ones that I liked the most were the, the dark sort of uh, fantasy ones and the cosmic horror ones, the Lovecraftian ones. Those I drew to the most. Those were my most um, liked stories out of the collection. I thought Snyder did a really fantastic job with all of her cosmic horror aspects here. Uh, they were really well done. I was able, I was able to vividly picture um, all those in my head. Really fantastic. And I learned after I got done with this, uh, she actually has another collection that's all cosmic horror, I believe, called The Garden of Eldritch Delights, uh, which I really want to check that one out after really liking her cosmic horror stuff in this one so much. So this collection is comprised of 13 stories and two poems, so 15 pieces in total. Uh, the first about half or so of the collection I really enjoyed. I thought it was strong. I was having fun with the stories. Uh, but the second half, it sort of took a dive and I did not enjoy the second half nearly as much. 
Um, I struggled to get through quite a few of the stories in the back half of the book. And some of them, honestly, I just found boring and I just didn't really care about the characters or what was going on in those stories. Uh, there's a poem near the very end um, that's talking about the last two poems that they're going to be rated R, sort of the gloves are pulled off. And I was excited. I thought it was going to finish out strong. Uh, those last two, po uh, the last two stories in the collection just sort of flopped for me. I didn't really like those either. Uh, the last one is a Cosmic Horror Lovecraftian one. It was okay. But the one before that was a Christmas story and it started out kind of good and then it took a like a comedic turn and the comedy just didn't land for me at all in that one. I think it's called Toymaker's Joy. Um, that one, the last two just didn't do it for me. They didn't feel any more rated R than the other stories in the collection already. Uh, so it, unfortunately it sort of, it sputtered out instead of landing, sticking the landing and ending strong. Uh, but let's talk about some positives. I do want to Talk about some stories I did like. I do have two honorable mentions, and then I'll give you my top three stories uh, that I enjoyed in the collection. Uh, so the two honorable mentions, Beggar's Night, the opening poem, I thought that kicked off the collection of, in a fantastic way. It really captured the Halloween spirit and had me excited to dive into the rest of the collection. Uh, the next story uh, I want to mention is the first actual story in the book. It's called Hazelnuts and Yummy Mummies. Um, and this one wasn't a Christmas story, but it did sort of riff off of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, which I thought was pretty cool, uh, but done more in a, you know, a horror Halloween type way. Uh, it didn't really feel Halloween, but it was definitely not a Christmas story. Uh, riffing off the sort of ghost of Christmas past, future, and present after our main character in that story, an author, eats some edible brownies that has a hallucinatory drug in it. And she sort of starts to hallucinate the past, present, and future and guided by these ghosts. I thought that was a cool riff on A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. That one was pretty cool. Uh, but my top three stories, so we'll do three, two, one. Uh, number three is What Dwells Within. This one's sort of dark fantasy mixed with horror. Uh, it's about this sorcerer or this magician and her ferret familiar, her sort of magical ferret pet. And they're sort of on the run from this group of powerful beings who are hunting her down. She did something wrong and they're basically out to capture her or kill her. Uh, but along the way, she comes across a friend and his girlfriend is missing and she helps fight some baddies um, along the way to help him out. I thought it was cool. I liked the fantasy elements here. It uh, reminded me sort of bits and pieces of Dungeons and Dragons here with um, the magical abilities she had and whatnot. It was a really fun, entertaining story. Uh, number two, The Kind Detective. This one was probably my favorite, really, really uh, cosmic horror one. Uh, and this one, there are trees are just randomly and instantaneously vanishing from people's front yards. Just out of nowhere, there's like a loud thunder crack and the trees are gone. And we follow this detective and he's trying to figure out this mystery, unravel the mystery, find out what's going on. And maybe he discovers the truth that he shouldn't have discovered. Uh, the ending to that one was great. I love the visual cosmic horror imagery at the end of that story is really well done. And then my favorite one is Visions of the Dream Witch, uh, Shagos, Voodoo, and an Ancient Monster Lurking in the Swamp. And that's all I'll say about that one. That one was, again, sort of dark fantasy, a little bit of cosmic horror, a little bit of horror, had lots of genres sort of mixed in. Uh, but the atmosphere in that one, the setting, it was sort of set in the swamps. Uh, reminded me a lot of um, The Boatman's Daughter by Andy Davidson, just that atmospheric, you know, bayous and swamps, and, you know, it's hot and sweaty, there's mosquitoes going around and stuff, just that setting, I think, made that one rise to the top for me. I really enjoyed the setting and the story for that one. Uh, well, that's been my review. Um, overall, it was two and a half stars. I really enjoyed the first half. The second half for me was unfortunately sort of lackluster, and I struggled to get through those. Uh, but this has been my two and a half star review, run it up to three for Amazon and Goodreads of Halloween Season by Lucy A. Snyder from Raw Dog Screaming Press. Uh, well, that's all I have for you guys today. So thank you for spending your time with me. Again, my name is Brad, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.